to Skein Studio. My name is Kristen. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as Skein Yarn and on Ravelry as K10, that's K10. Um, hope you're all well. It's been quite a while since I've podcasted. Uh, I have been very busy um, just getting back into work and um, getting back into the swing of things. It's taken um, quite a bit of time to catch up uh, with all the work that um, needed to be done um, when I took a break over Christmas so yeah it's uh, sorry about that but um, I think this year uh, I will try very hard to put a podcast out every week but if I don't do it I'm sure you guys understand I haven't pod faded I will definitely be um, recording podcasts just when I can. Um, so it might be every week, every second week, every third week, just whenever I can. Uh, but I have like a ton of things to talk about today. I've been really busy, particularly with sewing. I have really caught the sewing bug. Um, but anyway, let's get into it. I'll talk about knitting first and then I'll talk about sewing. So if you're here for knitting, you can just watch the beginning if you're not interested in the sewing part. Um, and if you're not interested in the knitting part, you can watch the sewing part at the end. Okay, so uh, finished object for knitting. I did actually finish something, but I left it at work because I was taking pictures at work and I accidentally left it there. Um, it was, it is, uh, the Easy One uh, Pullover by Hohi Locatelli. I will put a picture in up here. Um, I used the skein, our skein yarn um, Uptown Sock in the uh, Eventide colorway and it's a lovely sort of speckled yarn. It's got um, pinks and purples and blues. It's it's really speckled but it's kind of subtly. It's not bright bright colors so it actually works quite well when you're knitting um, quite a large project. Uh, and like I've said in the past it's really nice to use um, speckled yarn or variegated yarn when you're um, knitting quite plain designs because it really lets the yarn shine. Uh, so yeah that was a lot of fun. Uh, the pattern has been released. It was released last week. I'll put a link to it in the show notes or if you're watching well, if you are watching this on YouTube I will put the link down below. Yeah, it was great. I did do a couple of um, modifications. Uh, I actually knit the uh, whole piece in a tighter gauge. So I think the pattern was 21 stitches um, in 4 inches and I did 20 stitches. So it's a little bit um, fitted. Uh, the actual um, design itself is meant to be very oversized. So I took that in a bit by um, tightening up the gauge and I also uh, didn't finish the neckline so it's just a the actual design is a boat neck it's quite wide um, and then at the end you pick up stitches and you knit around and you sort of tighten it in I actually really liked it just because the the sweater itself is very plain it's um, meant to be very relaxed and easy um, it has that kind of look so I didn't want to polish it off with a nice neckline I actually wanted to leave it which is what I did uh, you'll see it in the picture it's just a rolled neckline um, yeah and I think it looks really nice and there have been a couple of other people who did the same thing so um, it makes for a seriously easy pattern to knit um, like how he said it's actually designed to be for people who ha I haven't knit sweaters before or for uh, more experienced knitters who just want something to relax with and that's exactly what it was. I travelled with this project, I took it, no that I didn't, that's not this one, but I would travel with this project because um, it's just mindless knitting, it's fantastic. Uh, so yeah, um, thumbs up, thumbs up. I, If you, you know, looking for a simple um, sweater that looks great totally uh, check this pattern out. Uh, it's fantastic. So for whips I have um, the Embrun's cardigan uh, which is... where did I put it? Uh, I've got stuff everywhere. I've got so much to show you guys. Um, so I'm doing the Embrun's cardigan by... 
Bye bye bye. Um, Emily Louie. <laughs> and um, I'm knitting this out of uh, Ren and Ollie Spin DK. Um, and I was going great guns with this. I um, was flying through it, uh, but the weather got really hot and I just couldn't. I just couldn't work on it, it was just too heavy. Uh, so I kind of stopped, but I I have done the whole body. I'll even put it on. So it is a it's almost like a bolero style. I'll show you. So it comes high waist. So it sits lower at the back and then higher at the front, which looks really nice with these kind of um, high-waisted pants and skirts. Uh, so there, you can see, I've got quite a few ends to weave in. Um, and yeah, I mean, obviously I have to block all this out because the uh, sides are actually rolling in a little bit. But once I wet it and block it, it will block out nicely. Um, I um, what was I going to say? I haven't done any modifications. Um, yes, I actually I really had my eye on this because I am I really like the style of high waisted pants and skirts. Um, I find them really comfortable. I mean, I went through that phase in the 90s where everything was very low like jeans so when you sat down it was like really low at the back and they are so uncomfortable and I just I hate them so um, I love really high-waisted things I love tucking um, shirts into high-waisted pants and skirts so I thought this cardigan would be perfect for that um, and it is it's sitting really nicely I like how it's a little bit lower at the back so you do in winter have that sort of warmth and then it sits a bit higher up at the front which I really really like I think it's a really flattering shape um, it does it will eventually have sleeves and they will be long sleeves uh, yeah really enjoying it um, very very quick to knit um, yeah, highly recommended. Uh, I what else was I going to say? Um, yeah, so I'm using uh, Ren and Ollie Spin DK, and the colorway is Cinnabar. And as you can see, it's a darker um, browny color with these lovely flecks of pink and gold. And it's very beautiful. Actually, there's a little bit of purple in there as well. Um, really really pretty yarn and of course I'll put a link to Ren and Ollie in the show notes she's an Australian dyer her name is Mia um, and I've been looking at her yarn for a very long time and I'm so glad that I uh, finally bought some and knit it up um, it's very soft it also has that feeling like it's going to be really it's going to wear really well um, it doesn't feel like it's um, going to peel like it it's a really nice sturdy yarn but still soft I really really like it so yes that is number one uh, I will it's still very hot here so I will probably wait for until it starts cooling down a little bit before I um, put the sleeves on the needles so but I'm in no rush um, doesn't start really getting cold here until April, so I've got time. Uh, the next project that I've been working on a lot, uh, that's our garage door, um, is the Lamina Wrap by Amber O'Brien, who is an Australian designer. It's sort of all Aussie today, or this week. Um, now this project I took to Greece with me and I did not knit much at all when I was away on holidays. Um, and it sort of sat to the side for um, quite some time because I was finishing off the, I had, what was the cardigan I was working on? Um, 
Portage I was doing that then I started the Embrons and then it got really hot and I was like I don't feel like knitting socks what else can I knit and then I remembered I had this already started um, so it's called the Lamina Wrap and I've done stacks of it that's it so starting and then I'm halfway so what my idea was um, was halfway to swap over this color here so this is the garter stitch rose and I was going to swap it over to a lighter color so basically I've knit this half the first half uh, we have whisper this is all skein yarn it's our um, one ply which is called uptown sock so I've got whisper be mine um, Cosmic Dust and then Vivid Violet. So there's four, yeah, four colorways. Um, the pattern asked for five, so I was trying to be a little bit economical. And what I decided, I did all the math, and I'm hoping this works out, that if I knit with the four colors and then I swapped over halfway um, the garter stitch color, I should be able to do this in four instead of five colors. So that's what I did. So I chose a, uh, to go dark on one side and then on the next side go light. So I think that'll be a nice effect. I'm, I'm actually really liking it. I'm finding this project to be really addictive. Uh, basically it's just it's the same lace repeat but there's two different charts because you're sort of altering it as you go um, so you're doing chart A you do a garter stitch row, chart B you do a garter stitch um, garter stitch rows not row um, and it's really really addictive uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying it uh, there are a lot of ends to weaving because you're changing colors but um, what I've started doing is knitting the ends in as I go so you can see all the ends there and what I do is a color work technique where you actually catch the um, the tail of the next color in or the, the tail of the previous color in at the back so it's it's basically just like you're um, weaving in ends but you're doing it as you knit and it's super fast so at the end of this uh, project once I've soaked it and blocked it out I can just go along with scissors and snip all this off I don't have to worry about uh, weaving in ends so yeah it's like saves you stacks and stacks of time and I've gotten so used to doing it that the other day I was doing a swatch for work and I was doing I did the first solid color then I was doing uh, some striping in the middle of it and I did uh, I actually um, wove in well knit in the ends as I was going and then when I finished the swatch I was like oh I, I just did it automatically so it's really good little habit to get into anyway yeah um, going along really nicely I have if you're interested in knitting this pattern and you want to do it with four colors instead of five I have knit 14 garter stitch rows in one color and then I'm changed. I've changed it. So the fifteenth garter stitch row, rows, um, or garter stitch block, I changed it to the lighter color. And then I'll do um, fourteen. So I've got fourteen of the dark, and then I'll do fourteen of the light. And then I'll, on the fourteenth one, I will bind off, and that will be huge because it's already massive. Um, so yeah. Um, really really enjoying it. So this, this is the Lamina Wrap by Amber O'Brien and of course I will link it below and in the show notes. Uh, I had something lovely that was sent to me in the mail by a friend of mine who you might know as Give Me a Crown. She has a podcast. This is Nina. I'm sorry I meant to get it out of the plastic before I record it her tag there so a little while ago she ordered some yarn from no some fiber from me and I sent her um, an extra little bit of fiber just to say either keep it or if you wanted to give it away on your podcast and then as a little thank you she sent this back 
um, to me, which was so lovely. Uh, it is because she makes she has an Etsy store. Um, where is it? Just down the bottom there. She has an Etsy store where she sells project bags and all sorts of knitting um, things like notions, pouches, and needle holders. So uh, she sent me this gorgeous bag. I love it. As you know, I, I love yellow. So she decided to send me this bag because on my podcast, as you know, I, every time I pull out a project, I accidentally pull stitches off my needles. So she said, basically, I've sent you a big bag, so that will prevent you from pulling out your knitting and getting your, your um, needles stuck and having your stitches fall off. And I've also sent you a um, needle holder so you can put your needles in and your stitches won't fall off. So that was lovely. Um, it's gorgeous. It's a huge, huge bag. So um, my next um, project, which will be after I've finished my Embrons cardigan, I am going to be casting on the Tegna by Caitlin Hunter. And I have um, some skein yarn, which is the Merino Silk. Uh, classy we call it and I'm going to be knitting it with that so that will be my project bag for that so thank you Nina it was beautiful all right now on to sewing um, I have I have um, finished loads of stuff so I'll go in order of projects. So the first thing I finished was the Sewaholic. I'll show you the pattern first. No, it's not Sewaholic. It's Grainline Studio uh, Alder Shirt Dress. And I did this one here. I was thinking of doing this one because my body shape is like I'm very pear shaped so I am thinner up the top and then I have um, hips and I thought maybe this one might not suit me because you've got gathers on your hips but um, when I was looking through Instagram and Pinterest of people who have um, made this and also um, Textilia and um, what's it called? I'll put it down below. There's two other sites that are kind of similar to Ravelry. That's very good. Um, oh, I just wish I could remember because she has a really good podcast. Anyway, um, when I was looking at other people's um, projects, people who have very similar shape to me uh, were wearing this and it looked really, really nice on them. So I ended up choosing this one. And I thought it might be a bit more interesting to sew because you've got the gathers. Uh, okay, so here it is. I will put pictures up here um, of myself wearing them so you can see what it looks like on, but I'm not going to change and um, show you. Um, but this is it. Oh, I did iron this, but it's sort of creasing a bit. So um, it's got these lovely little pleats on the back and the, the just at the sides. And basically, yes, it's just a little shirt dress. It's very comfortable. Um, I had a few issues with the collar, but that's because I I hadn't done a collar before. Or I had done a collar, but um, not one like this. Uh, so yes, I had a few little issues with the collar, but then I realised that um, the Sewaholic, no, the Grain Line people, had done a um, a photo tutorial. It was kind of like a sew along, so they had step by step um, pictures. So I just looked it up, and I was fine once I saw how it was meant to go. Um, but yes, this is probably the most complicated make I have done so far. There was loads of little bits and pieces. You know, you've got the collar, um, you've got the button bands pockets, gathered skirt. It took quite a while um, to actually cut out and put together. 
but I am really happy with it. I used a rayon, a lightweight rayon, and I've worn this quite a few times already, and I'm really, really happy with it. It's very nice to wear in summer, nice and cool. Um, and of course, I can wear it in winter as well with um, some tights. So that was that one. Uh, then I decided to do the Aram dress by Deer and Doe. Um, I've seen loads of this too on Instagram. I really, really liked the shape. It's sort of like a, um, what do you call it? Oh God, what do you, my brain's gone. What do you call it? <laughs> anyway, that shape. Um, and you can actually crop it off and have it as a little top. There are no buttons, there's no zippers, it's the way it's shaped, it's um, easy to get on, um, so you don't need any sort of um, buttons or zippers. And it's so easy, it's three pieces. I didn't do the pocket, so I just did, uh, so there's the front and um, the back pieces. Is there two sides? I um, can't remember. Yes, there is. So there's two sides, a back and a front. And it's really, really simple. So this is it here. I chose a really uh, full-on tropical print fabric. I saw this when I was at Spotlight, where I get most of my fabrics here. Um, and yeah, I really, really liked it. And I had quite a few people commenting when I posted it online. Um, it fits really, really nicely. Uh, it, it is quite short. I actually read quite a few people uh, who did a review on this say, say that they, it was shorter than what they had anticipated, and it is. Um, so I think if I made this next time, I would probably lengthen the dress by a few inches. Um, it doesn't really matter, I suppose. I live in a beachy sort of area, so you can get away with wearing quite um, high dresses and skirts. And in winter, it doesn't really matter because you just wear tights. It's my stomach growling. I'm actually quite hungry. It's not even lunch yet. So yes, very, very much enjoy this. I am going to make a few of these. I really liked it. I really liked how it fit. Um, I didn't make any adjustments. I The only thing that I did do, but they do actually explain it, or they say you can do it in the instructions, is um, I did a bias bind neck. So you can face it, put a facing in, or you could just do the bias binding, and I did the bias binding. And it was the first time I've done it. It was so simple. And I am going to be doing this on a lot of things. Because I really, really like that sort of look. Much nicer than facings too. Because I find sometimes facings can um, come out and show. But this actually sits really nicely. So yes, two thumbs up for uh, the Aram by Deer and Doe. And my next two uh, finished objects are again Deer and Doe. I love their patterns. Um, they're really, really good. Uh, they have actually instructions in French and English. They are a French company. Um, but I did another... T I did, I've did. i done this shirt before. It's called Melolo uh, shirt. I did one of these... Uh, couple of months ago and I did it in a thick cotton which was not the best choice so uh, this time I chose two um, lightweight fabrics and I made this one again with the um, collar so the first one is the one I'm wearing um, I'll show you stand up it's really really sweet um, such an easy pattern um, even though it does have collars and button bands and all that sort of stuff, it's actually really, really simple. And the great thing is, is it's a kimono sleeve, so there's no sleeve seams. You're just cutting the sleeve, cutting the sleeve at the same time as you cut the front and back. So it's really, really simple. 
Uh, this one, I had this fabric for a very long time. I bought it when I was living in Armadale. And it's, I'm pretty sure, not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it's a merino. A very lightweight merino um, uh, fabric. I actually have a little bit here. So that's it there. As you can see, it's quite lightweight. So as a shirt, it's really, really nice. It's very comfortable, very cool to wear. Um, yeah, really happy with it. So what I actually did is I cut these fabrics out at the same time and I sewed one and straight away I sewed the other and it was super duper quick. Here is the other one that I did and I'll put a picture up here of what it, it looks like on. Um, this is a fun sort of flamingo bright pink. It looks like, you know, one of those old 80s tropical shirts but <laughs> it actually looks really nice on. Um, this is a rayon, a lightweight rayon that I bought uh, from Spotlight and I really really like it. Again, it's really nice to wear, um, great to tuck into jeans and skirts and things like that. So yeah, very very happy with it. And that's all for my finished objects for sewing, but I have a few plans. And I've actually just come back from uh, fabric shopping. I went this morning because... <gasps> did I bring it up? Yes, I did. Um, I have... Sorry for going off camera. I have uh, signed up for the Sew Over It um, Pattern Club, which is a PD you get a PDF uh, of a pattern once a month. You don't actually get it. They send you an early release and you get a discount. I can't remember how much the discount is but it's quite generous. Um, so I think it was five pounds um, that you pay to join the club and then you get the early release pattern and you also get a free pattern of your choice. They have like a, a list of patterns. And one pattern that I've had my eye on for a very long time is the Pussy Bow Blouse which looks like that. You can do the high neck or the v-neck and I really really like this v-neck one. Um, so I got this for free and I printed it all out. I've stuck it all together and I've cut it out. I haven't cut the fabric out yet. That was what I was shopping for today. Um, so yeah, I am really really keen. This is what I'm going to sew today. I bought two fabrics because I'm going to do the same as what I did with the Melilo, I'm going to cut both out at the same time and then sew them up one after the other. So I'm sort of thinking now with my patterns, I'm summer, I mean summer will be here still for quite some time, but I am actually thinking of mainly looking at some winter um, projects and getting some winter clothing sewn up. Um, so yes, I chose this fabric, which is so pretty. This is for the first Pussy Bow blouse. So it's got these beautiful little birds. It's sort of a uh, little bit sort of Japanese-y. I really, really like it. It's so pretty. So um, I was thinking maybe with this in winter, I would will probably wear a slip underneath, like I'll buy a white slip and um, have this as the top. I think it will look really pretty. So that's the first fabric and then, oh it's a lightweight rayon and um, Spotlight had a sale on for, I think it was 30% off all their rayon, printed rayons. So I got this one and then this one caught my eye as well, which is a bit different. But yes, so nice big flowers. So I think this one could be more of a nighttime going out, maybe to dinner um, fabric. And then the bird one is more the light sort of white birdie one. <laughs> Will be more sort of a daytime one. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, sewing those up. It's funny, I went to the counter and I was wearing what I was wearing, so I was blue. 
wearing blue and then I bought this fabric up and the lady sort of looked at me and she was cutting the fabric and she said you really like blue don't you? It's like yes. Yes I do. Alright and funnily enough I'm looking down at my next fabric which is also blue so I would like to also make another I was thinking maybe another Minetta dress but because I wear that thing all the time um, or I might do another pattern, but I'll show you the fabric first. So I bought this um, a few uh, weeks ago and I was actually wanting to sew... Um, I did bring it up to me. The I Am pattern called Cupidon. Uh, which is like a sort of a loose pullover in a uh, knit but when I was looking originally for a uh, some fabric for this I was wanting something a bit more sort of lacy um, and I saw the what they had at the fabric store and I was so tempted, but I was like, I'm not really sure if that's going to work. And I've never knit with like a lace kind of fabric before. So I ended up buying a jersey. And this is actually quite a um, thick jersey. Uh, so I've sort of put it to the side because I, I, it's not really what I wanted. Anyway, I, when I went fabric shopping today, I found... Uh, this, which again is blue again, so funny. And it has, it does actually have a bit of stretch to it. So I'm just going to do it because this is what I had in mind. So I'm going to sew this into this pattern. I hope it works. I really don't know. I think it will because it has... So you cut out bands for the neck and the hem and the cuffs. Um, so you're not turning up and hemming it, which is a bit of a problem when you have lace because you can see it, obviously, when you turn it up. Not that it's a huge deal, but yeah. Um, anyway, I'm just going to do it. It was on special. I think this was like $7 a metre, so it was quite cheap. Um, and yeah. I'll give it a go. So with this fabric what I've decided to do is either another Minetta but with long sleeves or I actually bought this pattern a while ago and it's the... how do you pronounce that? Aldea dress? Aldea dress? It's by Pauline Alice. Uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that. And I'm going to be doing, I thought I might try this one. Although it does have a pencil skirt and I'm not quite a fan of pencil skirts. So what I might do is swap this skirt over for that skirt but have that top. Anyway, I will think about it. But this will be for winter. Another sort of winter dress. Because I really like the fabric. It's really, really cute. So I think that would make a really sweet little dress. Either that or a top. Oh, one second. Sorry about that. Um, I don't even know who that was. I'm getting really odd phone calls on my mobile, which is a really weird thing. I had some from Tunisia and the other day it was Papua New Guinea and very odd. So yeah, um, that's all my plans. I have loads of things to sew um, and I have loads of things to knit. So I'm going to be very, very busy for the next um, couple of weeks. Uh, I also I have my eye on um, a jacket, which uh, is a sew over it pattern. It's the Coco jacket and it's very simple. Um, there's no uh, buttons or zips or colours, um, but it is lined, um, and I would like to give that a go. I was actually looking at the fabrics at Spotlight for 
the jacket and I couldn't really see anything and that could probably be because it's summer here so they haven't got their heavier weight fabrics in but I yes I'm keeping an eye out for that and I'm also thinking of making a pair of the ultimate trousers which is another sew over at pattern um, I, I've seen loads of people uh, wearing them, they're high waisted, uh, They everyone raves about how comfortable they are. You can um, make it in a cotton as long as it's got a little bit of stretch or you can um, do denim or um, you know thick suiting uh, material. I actually have some um, thicker weight, uh, it's like a suiting um, fabric in my stash which I bought years and years ago so I could actually um, try it on that because uh, I was thinking yes for winter having a nice warmer pair of trousers would be nice um, and also the pattern's great for summer because you can, you can use lighter weight cottons. So yes that's also in my queue. I haven't bought the patterns but um, I certainly am thinking of it that it's uh, yeah I just got to find the fabric first. So anyway, um, that's all for today. I um, hope you're all well and like I said, I will try and get podcasts out um, when I can. Um, like I said, it's been really busy at work, which is fantastic. It's just trying to um, get some, you know, half an hour, an hour to record the podcast and then um, put it all together. So yes, I will see you whenever I see you, hopefully a week, hopefully two weeks. Um, but until then, I hope you're all well. And um, come find me on Instagram and Ravelry. And yeah, keep well and see you later.